thing I want to share with you, a message that I do believe that every one of you needs to hear. And before we get into that, let, let's, let's ask the question. Today it's raining outside. We, we blessed for the rain, right? But there's this one after effect of the rain that sometimes we don't find all that appealing. Who could tell me what that is? I heard a word? Mud. mud. Ah, it's mud. Here's the thing. Mud is problematic. Because mud has this way of ruining your day. Imagine you getting ready to go out. You doing your best to look your best. You tetivating yourself. You putting on your nice white suit. If you're into that kind of thing. And uh, you get outside and the jog, uh, dog jumps on you. And those muddy paws are all over the front of your pants. What started out as such a wonderful day has just been spoiled by what? By mud. You see, mud is something that most people just really cannot get excited about. It's dirty. And if you've been to um, the, the uh, Harabiaspur Dam, you will know that it smells horrible as well. Now, it often ends up as muddy footprints on your brand new carpets or your car's upholstery. Because you know that your kids are not going to sit still, right? They're going to put their little feet right on top of your, of your back seat of your car. Mud is slippery. Mud stains everything. It sticks to everything. And if you're really, really having a bad day, you're going to get stuck in it. And it's going to be a massive disaster. As I said before, mud is something that most people do not find appealing. And most people do not find exciting. And I just want to say something to the gentleman sitting here. If you're sitting here and you're conjuring up images of female mud wrestling, please come and see me after the service. I will pray for you. <laughs> there is, however, somebody who gets very excited about mud. Who would you say is that person? Hmm? No. Mud equals clay. Clay is formed by the potter. Now there's one person, let's talk in the old days, there's one person in the village that could get excited about the mud because that means there's something he can use to bring something into being. Where everybody else was performing, complaining and moaning because, oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's going to be all over my carpets, it's going to be everywhere, I'm going to have to clean for weeks after this. You did not hear the potter complain. The potter got excited when he saw the mud because he saw potential. Because he saw an opportunity to create something beautiful. You need to understand something. A lot of you have some clay pot somewhere. Whether you cook with it or whether you've put it on the mantelpiece or whatever you're doing with it. Remember what it started out as. It started out as something that 99% of the world's population would not give the time of day to. It started out as something that frustrated and irritated and upset most people. You see, a potter can take something that most of us find despicable, which is mud, and turn it into something beautiful, something functional, and something useful. Let's look at what it says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 1 to verse 6. <clears throat> This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house. There I will give you my message. God wanted to reveal a very important truth to this prophet. But he said to him, I'm not just going to talk to you. I need you to go there to see what I am talking about. Go to the potter's house. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at his wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. Now, when the English word marred is used, it means that it wasn't functional. It didn't look right. It was skew. It was kokai. It was problematic. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best unto him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. So listen to me. 
God wanted this man of God to go down to the potter's house to see what happens when a potter works with a pot that doesn't look right. Let me ask a question. Did the potter take the clay and just throw it away? Did he shout at the clay? Did he curse the clay? What did he do? He looked at the clay and he said, "Mm, You're not perfect. You need more help. I'll work with you a bit more. I'll give a bit more attention to you. And the Bible says he shaped out of what wasn't functional, what wasn't nice, what wasn't pretty. He shaped something that was. Then the word of the Lord came to me. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done? declares the Lord, like clay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands, O Israel. Now here's a very important thought. From this passage, one thing that is very clear, it is the potter that decides how the final product will look, not the clay. Now, for you to understand where I'm going with this, look at your neighbor and say, you are the clay. And I don't mean you ugly and dirty, you smell, you stink, and you, you know. I just mean you are the clay that God used to create, in the end, that pot. There's somebody here, they probably told you before you have a goofy smile. The potter gave you that smile. Be proud of that smile. There's somebody here, your ears are a little bit out. At school they used to say, here comes the one with the air brakes. But let me tell you something, the potter gave you those ears for a reason. Be proud of them. There's some of you here, you don't like your hairstyle. But the potter decided to give it to you. And when he looked at you, he said, wow, how beautiful is this pot. Be proud. Of who you are. Be proud of what you have. The potter will keep shaping and reshaping if necessary until he is satisfied with the end result of the pot. Now, here's the next thing I want you to know you are a work in progress. Look at your neighbor and say, You are a work in progress. Can I tell you what the biggest problem is in most people's lives? Their attitude is, I've arrived. Ta da! And that's when you make your biggest mistake. How many times have you come to, to, to a place in your life where you're like, okay, I'm arrived. I, I, I is fine. Normally you're a teenager when you come to that stuff. But unfortunately, some older people have the same problem. Vanity, pride. Nobody in this room is perfect. Every single one of you, when it, when it comes to your pot, there might be some problems, some nicks, some cracks, some hollows, some bumps, some whatever. And there is only one person that can fix that. Listen to me very carefully. You might have a lovely wife. You might have a beautiful wife, but she can't fix you. The only one that's going to fix you is God. You might have a very strong husband that can take a telephone book and tear it in two. But all his strength and all his power will not fix you. When you want to be fixed, the clay must go to the potter, the potter must adjust the pot, and then the pot will become what the potter wanted. One of the problems that we face today, when we realize that there is a problem with this pot, we run all over the place, but we don't go to the only one that can fix the problem. And this is one of the reasons why the world right now is suffering. Because we go to things like hypnosis, We go for things like ESP. We go for things like positive thinking. We go to motivational talks. I'm not saying somebody can't motivate you. But there's a difference between being motivated and being fixed. When your pot is cracked, you don't need motivation. Listen, yeah, you know, because the motivational speaker is going to tell you, you can say to yourself, you can hold a thousand liters. Explain to me how you're going to hold a thousand liters when your pot is cracked and all the water is just going to keep running out. You need to go to the one that can fix the pot that's cracked. Until we don't come to a place that we realize 
Every single one of you was created by God for God with a specific purpose. We're never going to fix the problems that we're facing right now. We need to stop finding different ways to try and fix ourselves that are not from God. Because ultimately, the only one that can help you to come to the place where you need to be is God. Today, all over the world, there are churches that are only half full. Today, all over the world, there are churches that are empty. Now, there could be a lot of reasons for that. Maybe they weren't preaching the truth. Maybe they're not relevant, but I don't care. That tells me that most of mankind today is not trusting God to fix their problems. They found other ways. You know, there's a guy out there that apparently is an expert at fixing problems. He's called Jack Daniels. Let me tell you something. He knows nothing. He can't fix your problems. You forget about your problems when you dance with him. But by the time his effect wears off, you've created more problems. I'm not talking nonsense here. I'm telling you the truth. A lot of us try and escape from our problems by going down the worldly path. We go out, we have fun, we party, we get drunk, we do all sorts of stupid things. That's why a lot of marriages end up in the toilet, in the dustbin, in the divorce court. If you really want to fix your life, listen to me today and listen to me very carefully. You need to come back to the roots. You need to come back to the basics. You need to come back to God. Stop running away from God. Stop treating God like he doesn't exist. Stop telling the potter how you want your pot to look. It's not your choice. It's his choice. You were created by him for a purpose. Be who you are. God is showing Jeremiah that God is like the potter. He's busy working away at the clay which represents the people until he gets to represent the shape that he has in mind. There's some of you when you stand and you look in the mirror, you think, geez, what an ugly pot. Repent of those words. How dare you tell God what he created and believe to be a thing of beauty is ugly. And some of you believe that because some other schmuck somewhere told you how ugly you are. Listen to me very carefully. Have you seen some of the paintings out there that sell for billions and billions and billions of dollars? You and I might think they're useless. But their worth is not determined by what you and I think. It's determined by their worth. Somebody might tell you, you're not that pretty. Somebody might tell you, you're too fat. Of course you're not. I cut that off. But <laughs> Why do we put so much value in what people say? Doesn't the value get determined by the creator? When God created you, he gave you full value. But you're lending out your ears and you're listening to what the world says. And therefore you devalue yourself. Stop doing that. Pots are like people. You get big ones, you get small ones. You get tall ones, you get short ones. The short ones don't come from Portugal, but anyway. <laughs> you get pretty ones, and you get, well, not so pretty ones. Some are very functional, some are very homely. Some are more decorative, and some, well, we will rather put them on the mantelpiece. Because that's their place. Some are more specialized. Some can be used for certain things, but not for other things. Some cost an arm and a leg because you went and you bought them from some boutique. And some were very cheap because you bought them on the corner Greek store. Even though no two pots are exactly the same, every pot was made by the potter for a specific purpose. And now listen to me. When a potter made it, I'm not talking about a machine. I'm talking about a potter. Even though when you look at them, they look the same. When you go measure them, they will never be the same. Because when a potter makes it, everyone is unique. Listen to me very carefully. You are unique. And God didn't mess around when he made you. God knew exactly what he wanted to do when he made you. And you are unique for a reason. Let me remind you of something. 
An original is always worth a million times more than a copy. The original Van Gogh probably now sells for a hundred million. Yes, you're still going to pay a lot for a good copy, but maybe you're going to pay $20,000. There's a big difference. Here's one thing that I find difficult to understand. When God created us to be originals, why are so many of us trying to be copies of another pot? You will never be as good as that pot in what God created that pot to be. But you will be brilliant at who you are because that's who God created you to be. You cannot put a purely decorative pot in the oven. You all know what I'm talking about. You go somewhere and you go and buy one of those pots to put on the mantelpiece. It looks lovely. It's wonderful. It's all glazed and it's got all these flowery bits and whatever. Take that pot and put it in the oven and look at what happens. Ten minutes in, you're going to hear this funny popping noise. When you get in there, there goes the stew. Tonight we're eating bogarol. Why? Because we used something for something that was never created. Okay, where am I going with this? That's exactly why a lot of people have no joy in life. That's exactly why a lot of people have nothing but problems and issues and drama. And they are deathly unhappy inside. Because they try to do something that they are not created to do. They try and be somebody that they were never supposed to be. Listen to me, we all have different personalities. For those of you that know me well, know I'm a very quiet person. I say a lot when I preach. But other than that, I'm really quiet. If I really want to mess up my life, I must try and copy... Um, who can I copy? Mr. Cozzy. Because he's always got something to say. But the thing is, when I start trying to do that, I'm going to start breaking my pot. Because I'm going to force it to be something that I'm not. I must make peace with who I am. You must make peace with who you are. I'm not saying make peace with your flaws and your problems. Go to the potter and have it fixed. Some of you battle with your temper. In that area, your, cra your pot is cracked. Some of you have a lot of fear. In that area, your pot is damaged. But listen to me, the potter did not take the pot that was damaged and throw it away. You see, this is why, uh, let me explain to you where I want to go with this. The world will take you when you are slightly damaged or cracked or chipped or whatever and say to you, you are useless. Get out of here. And then we, because we get treated like that by man, we have this attitude that that's how God also feels about us. Listen, yeah, God doesn't feel that way about you. God is sorry for you that this happened. And listen, yeah, he didn't chip you. You got chipped by the world, by the circumstances of life. When a young child gets molested by somebody, a damage takes place in that pot, which if not fixed, will create a dysfunctional adult that's going to create a lot of problems in their life. It's not their fault. They didn't ask for it. They didn't look for it. But if you're sitting here and you know that that's who you are, listen to me very carefully. Somebody can fix you. His name is God. Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Great I Am, is still in the business of fixing cracked pots. But we need to come to Him to be fixed. There's some of you, you grew up in a household where you never received love. You were always yelled at. You were always shouted at. You were always demeaned and broken down. Maybe there was alcohol abuse in the house and you used to take that abuse. Now you've grown up and you're an angry, bitter, spiteful, hateful person. Let me tell you something. God did not create you that way. The circumstances of life created that in you. Your pot is cracked. It's dented. It's broken. But it's not useless. God made nobody useless. If you come to the potter, with the right attitude. And if you come with a heart that says, Lord, where I have gone wrong, where I have it, or whatever, please fix me. If you humble yourself before God, the word of God says, God will raise you up. In other words, he will repair you. The problem is we don't come to God to be fixed. A lot of people in this world have this attitude, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Let me tell you something, stop your attitude because you've got a really bad attitude. Why must people live with your temper? If even you know your temper is wrong. No, come on, let's be honest. 
You know, there's a lot of people like, take me as I am. Or it's, it's kind of like a take, take it or leave it deal. Listen to me carefully. If you know that your pot is damaged, why are you not trying to fix it? You should have pride in yourself. You should have pride in who you are. God never created you with that temper. That temper came because of life. And God wants you. Doesn't the Bible say you must love your neighbor as you love yourself? What good is it you love all your neighbors, but you don't love yourself enough to go to God and say, I'm wrong. And I don't want to be this way anymore. I want to be fixed. And I don't care what has to happen for me to be fixed. Because remember something. When the potter needs to fix the pot, he needs to put pressure. The problem with most people is we don't like it when God puts pressure in our lives. We want the easy way. I'm going to burst your bubble now, but let me tell you something. There are no quick fixes in the world whatsoever, not even through God. When you want to come to God to be fixed, you must have commitment. You must have perseverance. You must have dedication. And you must be willing to walk the narrow road. But it's rewarding because on that road, you'll get fixed. On that road, God will deal with you. On that road, God will work with you. And slowly but surely, your imperfections are going to begin to disappear. Don't come with an attitude of take it or leave it. Because you know sometimes you're wrong. And you're just using that to justify your problems and your issues. We need to come to a place that we are honest with ourselves and we are honest with God. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Amen? In the kingdom of God, there's light and darkness. There's black and white. And let me tell you something. If you've created some gray areas in your mind, they still belong to Satan. Because God operates in the light. Amen? People are a bit like pots. Because no two people are really the same. Even if you take two twins or twins that are identical. Spend a bit of time with them and you'll soon see which one is which one because their personalities are not the same. They might look exactly the same, but they have different personalities. Why? Because their souls are not the same. Like parts created by the potter for some specific function. So each of us was created by God for a specific purpose. If you've listened to my sermons before, you will know that I sometimes say, you like a tractor. It's got nothing to do with your looks. Don't get angry with me. I'm just using you as an example. But a tractor was created to plow. And if you use a tractor for what it was created, it's brilliant. It's phenomenal. It can plow a whole field in one day. But don't go and put it on the highway and expect to be in Pretoria in 10 minutes because it's not going to happen. And this is why a lot of people are frustrated because we take the tractor and we want to do 200 kilometers an hour on the autobahn. We take the boat and we can't understand why down here on, 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 on dry ground it's like, eh, no, 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 but nothing happens. Until you don't find your place, until you don't find your purpose, and until you don't trust God to use you in that, nothing is going to work for you. Your life will be frustrated, you'll be irritated, you'll be angry, you'll feel empty inside, and you'll feel hopeless. Like pots, there is a specific special purpose for every single one of us. And it won't do you any good to try to be something that you are not. I want to get back to something. Now, let's say this. It is unfortunately also true that a lot of people often have a problem with the potter's work in their lives. Many people are not necessarily happy with their shape, with their size, or the function of their pot. A lot of people are angry with God because He created them the way they are. My friend, listen to me carefully. We cannot all be created exactly the same. Ask yourself the question, do you really want to live in a world where we all look exactly the same? We all talk exactly the same. We all think exactly the same. We all act exactly the same. You'll go mad. You'll do everything you can to get out of this place. God created you the way you are because he wants you to stand out. He wants you to be different. He wants you to be unique. It's time for you to say thank you to God for who you are. 
Okay, so your eyes are a bit wider apart than everybody else. That makes you special. Okay, so your nose is a bit long and everybody calls you Pinocchio. They're just jealous of you because they don't have such a nice nose. <laughs> okay, so your bum doesn't exist. It's flat as a plank. Well, in some cultures, that's, ex that's, that's um, uh, perceived to be very sexy. You know, there is something good about you. What I want you to do is stop listening to the rubbish around you and begin to listen to the potter. Because when he looks at you, yes, my son, you have a goofy smile, but I still love you. Amen. Here's the thing. God loves you. God, when he created you, let, let me remind you of something. Let's go back to the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. God created for six days. What was the one thing that happened on the end of every day that God created? The Bible says he, stood, he took a step back. He looked at his creation and he said, it is good. And on the sixth day, God created man. And God took a step back and he looked at man. Who can I use as an example? Uh, Stan Lee. Please come forward. <laughs> You see, you're in trouble because I know your name. I don't know why you're laughing. I know your name as well. <laughs> look here, look here, look here. Come stand here. Come smile for the camera. The people need to see you. There's one or two people in America that needs to know who I'm talking about. Okay. This is Stanley. When God created you, <laughs> he took a step back. He looked at all of that. He said, wonderful. Amen. And you know what I'm talking about because you married the oak, didn't you? There we go. You see. Amen. Stanley, God bless you. Thank you. You can be seated. God is blessed by who you are. When you've got areas in your life where you know life has pushed you this way or that way, it's your responsibility to work to fix it. Some of you have way too much fear. The Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. That means the fear that you have today doesn't come from God. It came because of a defect that life brought into you. It can be fixed. Some of you have a big problem with jealousy. Let's talk about that. Okay, so now you were one of those big pots created by God that can make stew for a hundred people. And you don't like the way you look. You see this other pot sitting there in the corner, like all slim and all fancy and all hoity-toity. And you're like, oh, I, 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 I want to be one of those pots. Show me how that pot can create food for 100 people. You're going to put that pot in the fire and it's going to go, Pow! nothing left of it. Fact is, the reason why a lot of people have no joy in life is because they always want to be different. They want to be like somebody else. The reason jealousy exists is because we see something in somebody else that we're like, oh, I'm upset because I wanted that. And I can't make peace now with who I am because I really want to be who that person is. I say to you already, an original is always worth a lot more than a copy. Every time you try and be somebody else, you are breaking your pot. And you know what? If you keep trying to be somebody else your whole life, don't be surprised if you are a completely maladjusted adult. You know, I used to... Uh, uh, we all used to be kids one day, weren't we? School was actually a very difficult time, if you think about it. Because kids can sometimes be very cruel. Listen to me, I, I see it all the time. Kids can be very, very cruel. And let me talk to the adults here. You know, while I have the opportunity to have the mic in my hand, I have to say the things I need to say. If you are somewhere and your kids are being cruel to another child, as a parent, it's your responsibility to put your little, who knows what, in place. Because you don't know what damage they're creating in that person. You probably today as an adult, are suffering in certain areas because of what kids said to you. Now, do you really want that to happen to another child? It's time for you to put your son or your daughter in their place. Do not tolerate that kind of behavior because God hates it. 
It's the reason why a lot of people battle. Most people's issues come from childhood. From being... Um, uh, gespot, um, being bullied. Being teased. And many times there was no reason for them to be teased. But some bully just came and just did whatever. If you hear your children be nasty with another boy or another girl, God expects you to do what is right. You take them by the hand, you take them outside there, and you discipline them. And you say to them, if I hear that nonsense again, you don't know what's coming for you. If they need a bit of a hiding, I'm sure you can make a plan. If you need to take the phone away for six weeks, you take it away for six weeks, depending on the crime. Why am I saying this? Because if we don't do that, we're not loving our neighbor. You should care about other people's feelings. When you see somebody, let's say you're at a party, and everybody's having a go at that person, and you can see that that person's not taking it very well, stand up for that person and say, stop it now, it's enough. Stop caring about the people bullying that person. Care for that person because God cares for that person. God sees what damage it's doing to that pot. That pot's being crushed. And tomorrow, that pot will no longer have the function that God created it to be. Let's all make a commitment that we're going to care for one another. Let's all make a commitment that we're going to have compassion on one another. Going on. The day the potter formed you, he looked at you and he said to himself, this pot is perfect. It's exactly the way I wanted it, and I'm very, very proud of it. I don't care how people see you. Today I want you to hear that when God wants to speak to you today, he's saying to you, I am proud of you. Some of you have never had your parents look at you and say, I'm proud of you. Today I want to say to you, I'm proud of you. God says to you, I'm proud of you. God's blessed by you. Isaiah 29 verse 16 says, You turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. Shall that which is formed say to him who formed it, He did not make me. Can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing? In other words, this is how people treat God. You're not my creator. You did not make me. You know nothing about me. When we start doing things like that, we're looking for trouble. And we're going to find it. We will do well to remember that God is the potter. We are the clay. God is the creator. We are the created. The potter does not need to consult the clay when creating the pot. Listen to me very carefully. Imagine this potter sitting there with a heap of clay and it's like, mm, I need to shape you into something, but I know you, you, you're a little bit sensitive. So is it okay if I give you two handles or do you really just want one? God doesn't operate that way. God has a picture in his mind he creates the clay, and the clay needs to be thankful for the way it was created, because it was created beautiful and with a purpose. People sometimes feel that God completely missed the pot <laughs> plot when he created them. No. God actually created perfection. They feel that their lives are quite useless and sometimes they really battle to like what they see when they look at themselves. I agree with you. There's maybe things in your life that you need to change. But overall, let me tell you something, you're not half as bad as you think you are. Actually, God created you in perfection. Start seeing yourself in that perfection. And again, our biggest problem is comparing ourselves with another pot. It's not going to help you because you weren't created for that purpose. How often doesn't one child feel inferior because they aren't excelling at sports or academically like their brother or their sister? Let me talk to the parents here. None of your children are going to be exactly the same. And sometimes parents treat the children in a really bad way because let me, let, me, let me create an example. So your first child might be a girl. 
And she's a total brain box. And we thank God for that. Everything comes easy for her. She doesn't even have to study because she's got a bit of a photographic memory. So she gets 100% for every test and this and that. So here comes your boy. Completely different. Wants to be outdoors all the time. Wants to play a lot. Like sports. But doesn't do very well when it comes to the tests. And every day you're shouting at him, why can't you be more like your sister? Wara, wara. You're breaking him down. I agree he should work hard and I agree he should be disciplined. But don't expect him to do the same as his sister. Because in the end he's going to begin to hate himself. Because he's going to feel that you hate him. Embrace who he is. You know, not everybody can be a brain box. And let me help you to understand something. If everybody's going to sit behind a computer, who's going to fix your car? Who's going to plow the field? Who's going to milk the cows? Who's going to go fishing? Everybody has a purpose. Let them excel at their purpose. I'm not saying tolerate insolence, tolerate disobedience, tolerate rebellion, because God will not like that. But we're all different. Let's accept that fact. If you try your whole life to be like somebody else, you will miss who you really are. Only the potter can change his pots. No pot can change themselves. If we put too much pressure on a pot to try and change its looks, its function, it'll break. Can I tell you why the world is full of broken people? Because either they believe that they're not good enough or everybody else told them that they're not good enough or they went through the trials and tribulations of life and it ended up leaving them cracked. God is the one that can fix it. The best way to discover your gifts, your talents and your purpose is to stop trying to be somebody else and try to be who you are. And then it begins to come through. Then it begins to shine through. Romans 9 verse 20 says... <clears throat> But who are you, O oh man, to talk back to God? Let me say something. This is something that I've noticed more and more and more. People talking back to God. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why you didn't do this? Why? Listen to me very carefully. Don't forget who you're talking to. Yeah? God's not your chomi boot. God is God. When you talk to God, talk to God with respect. Come to God with a humble heart, not an arrogant attitude but who are you O man to talk back to God shall what is formed say to him who formed it why didn't you make me this way or why didn't you make me that way does not the potter have the right to make out of some lump of clay some pottery for noble purposes and some for common use in other words if the potter decided that you need to be a cooking pot be the best cooking pot you can be and if the potter decided that you are all dainty and hoity-toity and you're there up on the mantelpiece, stop trying to be a cooking pot because that's not your purpose. God will shape your life to be exactly the way he had always planned for you if only you will allow him to do so. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, for which God prepared us in advance. Did you hear that? God, when he brought you here in advance, already prepared you for specific purpose. Just find out what that is. And begin to be your best. And the people around you will be blessed. You will be blessed and God will be blessed. Pots are fragile. The next point that we need to understand about a pot is pots are very fragile things. If you don't look after them, if you don't treat them well, they have a tendency to chip, to crack, or even to break altogether. And this is exactly where society is right now. There are many, many, many completely broken, cracked pots out there in the world, and probably some of them sitting here listening to my message today, and they can't understand why everything is always going wrong. Listen carefully. People, just like pots, can be fragile and often get hurt. 
There are many things that might have damaged your pot. Before I go into the things that damage the pot, <clears throat> I think it's important that we realize you probably know when your pot is damaged. You know when you have a problem with your self-esteem. You know when you are full of fear and anxiety. and You know when worries cause you to fall apart. You know when you always take out your frustrations on the people that you shouldn't be taking it out on. I don't have to tell you your problems. You know your problems. Stop trying to live with them. Stop trying to use a crack pot to do what it's supposed to do because it can't work. Imagine I have here um, a jug. You know, the purpose of a jug is to, to, to get water. If there's a big crack running all down the spot and I still keep trying to use it to take water, can it hold water when it's cracked? That's how people are. A lot of people in this world are cracked pots. And they still try and do what they want to do, but they can't, so they get frustrated, they get angry, they are infuriated, and they're always taking it out on people. I'm not telling you today to make peace with that. I'm telling you today, realize your pot cracked because of this or that or that, and deal with it. If you come to God with the right attitude, He will heal you. He will fix you. And what is difficult for you today will be easy for you tomorrow. If I have a pot with a hole in the bottom and I'm trying to... Imagine we're in a boat. And the boat is beginning to sink. There's a hole in the boat. But I've got this jug and I can use that to get water out. And here I am and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to throw out the water but there's a big hole in the bottom. Am I going to get anywhere? But what if we fix the pot? If we fix the pot, we can fix the boat. If we fix the boat, we can go somewhere. But it starts with a pot. It starts with you. There's many of you young. When I start talking about these things, you immediately thinking, man, I'm so glad my wife is here today because Vrachtach, she needs the sermon. <laughs> I'm preaching to you too. Stop finding fault with everybody else and examine yourself. Because you're not as fixed as you think. Probably you got quite a few cracks yourself. Do you know what is the first place you need to get to before you can find the path of healing? It's acknowledging that you have a problem. You can't help, even God can't help people that claim to be perfect. God wants you to acknowledge that you have flaws. God wants you to acknowledge that you have problems. God wants you to acknowledge that all the hurt inside of you has made you a bitter person. Because till you don't get there, God can't heal you of your bitterness. Some of you, yeah, you have a problem with your temper. Your problem is not your temper. Your problem is the hurt inside of you that creates that. Arr! Because you don't want to get hurt again, you get angry and you push everybody away. It's time for you to fix that. The potter can fix any pot. But you got to come to God. You got to be humble. You got to need it. You got to want it. You got to realize that this attitude of yours is wrong. You got to come and confess that because of your attitude, you've also hurt a lot of people and you don't want to keep on doing that. And if you come to God with the right attitude, let me tell you something. It's not that long before everything in your life begins to fall into place again. God will help you. There are many things that might have damaged your part, including maybe a divorce, a disappointment in a relationship, the things people have said over you, the way people spoke to you. The things people have done to you, like betray you or reject you. Sometimes we damaged our own life by cheating, lying, alcohol, drugs, violence, anger, etc., etc. I don't care how the problem came. I'm saying if you can see there's a problem and you want to be helped, I know who can help you. God is the helper. Sometimes... Our pots are really in a bad state because we've been living under too much stress for too long. Too much pressure on a clay pot will cause the clay pot to break, to crack, to chip. 
All of these things cause problems for you and I. As a cracked or a broken part has lost a lot of its ability to function properly. Imagine you're a jug, you're a jug, and you're a jug. You're all working in the same place. That jug is healthy, that jug is cracked, that jug has got a big hole in. For the same amount of work, that jug will be 10 times more efficient than that one, and that one will be 20 times more efficient than that one. And in the end, this one is sitting there thinking, but what the hell is going on here? Why can't I do anything right? The pot must be fixed. Then she will be just as efficient as him, and if she gets fixed, she will be just as efficient as him. And that's why a lot of people are frustrated, because they try, they try, they try, nothing works. Your pot's cracked. Stop blaming everybody else for the problems and look at yourself and say, what went wrong? And then come to God and say, I'm cracked. I need help. I'm willing to be helped. Mainly, mainly pots of vessels that contain food or water. And like I've said to you earlier on, water cannot be held when a pot is cracked. Mainly, we have to contain within us the treasure of the gospel. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, inside of all of us, God has put a treasure. The problem is the more the pot is cracked or broken, the more the treasure runs out. And then when you need it, it's no longer there. And then you feel empty and you have this void inside of you. Your purpose, my purpose, number one is to bring flavor in the lives of people. Didn't Jesus say you must be the salt and the light of the earth? Okay, so you must add spice to people's lives. What spice do young girl, what spice do you like? What's a spice like, yeah? So, have you ever, who of you have ever had millipop? Come, just wave at me. If you grew up in an Afrikaans house and you didn't have millipop, then probably something was wrong there. Then you really need prayer. Come for prayer. I'll pray for you. Here's my question. Have you ever had millipop without salt? You can die from that. Let me just tell you something. You can die. I mean, that's the stuff of nightmares. It's amazing how a few grains of sand can change the taste and the flavor. Look at your neighbor. Point at them. Say, your purpose is to add flavor. Your purpose, your purpose is to add flavor. But that salt, the flavor is within. And then when we, we interact with people, that flavor, a godly flavor comes out of us and touches people. Do you know why our churches are empty? Not because God is not real. Not because God is not in the house. Because there is no flavor in you. There is no flavor in you. There is no flavor in you that brings people to God. It's one of those things. So here's the thing. How do I add flavor to the lives of people if I can't hold the flavor of God in me? I can't. The Holy Spirit is called the living water of God. Jesus said, come to me all of you who are thirsty. Raise your hands if you are thirsty. I'm not talking about you can do with a cup of coffee. You yeah, understand? <laughs> I can also do with a cup of coffee. And once I'm finished, yeah, I'm going to have one. But the Bible says, if you want the Spirit of God, you must be thirsty. In other words, you can't have this blasé attitude. Oh, well, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. You're not going to get nothing from God that way. But now, when God begins to pour out the living water, you are a container. If you are cracked everywhere, you can't hold the living water of God. Then what are you going to give to other people? Nothing. And that's the problem that we face today. Many people battle in life because their pot is cracked or broken. Therefore, they cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. The good news is I'm almost finished. <laughs> There's good news for all of us. God is the potter and he can reshape any pot if the pot is willing. I'm sure you listen to my message today. This is a good message. In fact, when I get home, I think I need to listen to it again. Now, listen carefully. Listen carefully. If you realize today that you've got some problems, you've got some issues, you can leave here and just leave it, and then today meant nothing for you. 
Or you can begin to chew on this message and let God speak to you. And begin to find those areas in your life where you know things are not good and not right. And you can begin to trust God to help you. And I want to promise you that He will. The Bible says, the bruised reed He will not break. The cracked pot He will not destroy. The world might not like you because you are but cracked here or there. God says, come to me. Come to me all who are broken and heavy laden, burdened and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. The problem today is people run everywhere else to have their problems fixed. And they can't fix you. Man can not fix what went wrong with you. God can. There's a lot of pelikis on the market. But the only peliki that works very well is the gospel. Get some of that. Get some of that. <laughs> Jeremiah 18 verse 4. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot. Shaping as it seems best unto him. Some of you are marred. In other words, things have happened. You're not the way you're supposed to be. Come to the potter. Get fixed. Your life will go on. The clay must yield to the hands of the potter. And to the will of the potter. Then the potter can reshape and remold that pot. John 5, 17. Jesus said to him, My father is always at work to this very day. And I too am working. There's no holidays in the kingdom of God. There's no such thing. You knock on the door and nobody opens. God is always working. He might as well be working with you, working with you, working with you, working with you, working with you. What I'm trying to tell you is God's available. Where are you? Because if you don't go to him, nothing will get fixed. Let me say something. The potter doesn't run after the cracked pots. The cracked pots need to run after the potter. There's your problem. People are waiting for God to just do it. Doesn't the Bible say, come to me, all who are burdened and heavy laden. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Today, the world is full of empty churches. Because people don't come to God anymore. Then you're never going to get fixed. Your life will never get any better. I've said enough. This was a good message. Amen. This was a message God wanted you to hear. My question is what you're going to do with it. I can't force you into anything. Neither can I really tell you what to do. Those are things you're going to have to figure out for yourself. But maybe you needed to hear today there's hope. I want to tell you there's hope. God can help you. He's in the business of fixing things. And you know, did you see what he says? Sometimes he'll even reshape you into a completely new pot. How many times have I seen people that have truly met with God and been filled with the Holy Spirit and their family says, who are you and what did you do with so and so? Because that person is completely different. I want to say to you, come to Jesus. Come to God. Come with the right attitude. Be willing to lay down your old life. Be willing to lay down all the anger and all the frustration and all the fear and all the bitterness. And trust God to make you into a new creature. Doesn't the Bible say when the Spirit of God comes into us, we will be a new creature? The old things will be gone and behold, everything will become new. It's time for us to become new. It's time for us to come to Jesus. I want to ask you to close your eyes. I'm going to do a prayer for you and for the people that are listening. And for the people that are listening, you might not be here, but God is speaking to you through the airwaves. And what God does for these people, God will do for you. It's called faith. When we have faith, it moves the hand of God, Heavenly Father. 
as I stretch out my hand towards these people. I want to ask you and I pray, I humble myself before you. I acknowledge that in myself I am nothing and I can do nothing for nobody. But I know the healer. I know the redeemer. I know the one that can restore what was lost. And it is you. Please, Holy Spirit of God, work with these people. As their hearts begin to turn back to you, as they yield their lives to you, Lord, have mercy on them. There are many crackpots here. There's a lot of them, they have big holes and they've lost their function. Please, Lord, help them. Be the potter and shape the clay. And if necessary, I know that you will even make a brand new pot. I pray for the anointing of God to be poured out upon every single one of them. I pray for a supernatural move of the Spirit of God to bring healing, to bring restoration, to restore life, to restore purpose. And I thank you for this now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, bless God.